before it's too late. Senior wildlife ecologist Murray Evans and National Parks and Wildlife worker Dave Hunter are part of Project Corroboree, a rehabilitation program set up to try and save the frogs before it's too late. The captive husbandry program has two main aims. The first is to breed corroboree frogs so that we can re-release them in areas where there are very low numbers to help bolster those populations. The second aim is that in the unfortunate event that the northern corroboree frog becomes extinct in the Brindabella ranges, then we have um, an arc situation that gives us options for the future. Since the program started, the scientists have found that the species is continuing to decline, something that will be to our greatest shame. I think it's important to preserve biodiversity because it greatly enriches human life and I also think that frog species can potentially be very important to humans. We've discovered many new chemicals that can help us in areas of medicine in frog skins. Their frogs are often referred to as, as walk, walking pharmaceuticals. They have many interesting properties within their complex skins. And also I think that they have their own intrinsic value and, and right to survive and there's a great loss to humanity when we contribute to the extinction of species. Hey frog! Hey! There you go, so he answers. That's why, the way we find them when we're looking for them at Kosciuszko. We walk around the mountain, we yell out, Hey frogs! And they usually answer. And that's it's because that is at the frequency of the frog. You hear him calling there again. Jerry Marantelli runs the Amphibian Research Centre in Melbourne. He's working hand in hand with the scientist of Project Corroboree in the fight to save the species. Well, this is a corroboree frog breeding facility and in here we have uh, frogs that live on Kosciuszko, uh, the coldest mountain in Australia and the tallest mountain in Australia. So in every one of these tanks there are frogs, tadpoles or, or uh, young frogs, metamorphlings. These dry bogs like this, which would normally be full of water in the winter, uh, dry up over summer and the frogs breed in them. By the mid-1990s, Jerry, like other scientists the world over, was baffled that frogs were not just dying out in polluted areas, but they were also disappearing from pristine environments. And when the last survivor of the sharp-snouted torrent frog died in his hands, he vowed this destruction had to stop and opened the Amphibian Research Centre, dedicated to the research and conservation of Australia's unique frogs. A few people got to the idea of thinking that perhaps it was a disease because the way that the extinctions occurred was in one part of the country, the next part, and it looked like it was moving along. Whatever was happening was moving along. Nobody could find what the disease was. In the mid-1990s, um, myself and a few other people working together on a, a, a group of captive frogs and some wild frogs that were dying out, were able to discover a disease which is now known as the chytrid fungus. Scientists know that the fungus lives on the frog's skin, causing damage to a protein called keratin, which gives the skin its rigidity. But they are still uncertain as to what happens next. One theory is that the fungus releases some kind of toxin. Another is that as frogs breathe and drink through their skin, the source of humanity's potential new medicines, it's possible that the fungus kills by somehow disrupting this ability. The chytrid has wreaked such damage that Jerry's centre is something of an arc for a number of species that were once commonplace, such as the growling grass frog and the spotted tree frog. But humanity too has also played its part in the frog's destruction by introducing foreign species such as trout into the ecosystem. And what's happened in a lot of places is that trout having completely wiped out the frog, what they've done is they've pushed them up into small sections of stream above high waterfalls where the trout can't travel. And where you've got a small population of frogs locked away in an area where they can't go anywhere, apart from being eaten by trout, then they're subject to other, other problems coming in and causing them to be wiped out. And in the case of New South Wales, the very last population of spotted tree frogs left in New South Wales was then uh, blocked in a small section of stream like that by the trout and wiped out by the chytrid fungus. And if we have a look in here, maybe we'll find Dirk, who's the very last spotted tree frog that's come out of New South Wales, and we have been breeding him with Victorian females to recover the species in New South Wales.
With the mystery cause of the extinction now identified by Australian scientists as a fungus, the next step was to fill in the missing pieces and to try and stop the disease spreading. As is so often the case when dealing with extinction, humanity is to blame. Somewhat bizarrely, the fungus was traced back to the development of the human pregnancy test and that, in Australia at least, the secret to its spreading was hidden in a box of bananas. The world's first pregnancy test involved injecting a woman's urine into the African clawed frog. If the woman was pregnant, a hormone in her urine triggered the frog to produce eggs. So popular was the test that the frogs were exported worldwide. And that's when the trouble began. But what no one realised was that the African clawed frog also carried a devastating fungus, chytridiomycosis, or chytrid disease. Diseases like the chytrid fungus have taught us a very important lesson. When a disease gets to a country and moves around, and we discovered it was moving around on our native frogs who travelled in things like bananas and pot plants and other things of that nature, they go to fruit shops and everywhere, and people would get this lovely little frog say, oh, I'll let it go in the wetland. And that's taught us a, a, a very horrible lesson because it helped move the chytrid fungus around, but it's taught us something else. There are other diseases out there, and they are coming. And when they get here, we'll need to try and have a method of stopping their spread or slowing their spread. In response to the accidental spread of infected frogs and in an attempt to make sure nothing like this happens again, the Amphibian Research Centre has set up a lost frog's home in Jerry's home state of Victoria. The idea is that people can bring frogs to the centre, where the strays will be collected, checked for disease, and if they're clear, adopted to schools as pets. If the future for our planet is to include any frogs at all, the battle has to be waged on two fronts. Ongoing research, and education. Yeah.